Okay, so what I have here is a Western Digital hard drive. It actually was an external hard drive that came into me. And it won't power up. So um, the person said, you know, they plugged it in and you could get the power light to come on and you know this is the when you take apart your Western Digitals or any other external on power supply, this is actually what the turn the music down a bit. This here is what the what this actually um, powers into. So you know, this this goes in here and then it just screws into the uh, into the unit and then it goes into the enclosure. Um, so this is your power board. Well, this was powering fine. So yeah, we're good there. Throw that off to the side. But I'm going to go to throw it in the dock, and you'll see for a second if I turn the dock on. Uh, I don't know if the camera's going to catch it, but we get a green light there, powered up. But I'm going to go throw it actually in the dock. I'm going to put it in the bottom one just so you can see. Well, let's try the top one. There we go. Yeah, it's totally dead. So. Now, there you go. See the green light comes on. Put it in. Nada. So it's just draining power. So that tells me that we have a problem on the board. And somehow it's been shorted out. Now, I suspect that the fuse is blown on it or a fuse but I'm not sure and I couldn't find details if it even has a fuse on it what looks to be a fuse looks fine I don't have a continuity tester here with me um, and frankly um, it just it's just as easy because to get another board or replacement board than it is to sit down and try to figure out exactly which component it is um, you know you're wasting your time or not wasting your time but you will spend a lot of time tracking down what the problem is and you can find one problem it's just and there'll be another so we're going to say you can just go and you get yourself another board and we give it a try so that's what this is this is going to be kind of a start to finish and it's been a while since i've done a video so this is going to be a start to finish video of me bringing this hard drive back to life so what i'm going to do um, is start i'm going to make a mark on this board because i don't want to get the two um, confused because they're the same family boards. Um, I'm just going to make a little mark right there so that I know this is the bad board. Matter of fact, we're going to mark it as a B for bad. The thing is that makes this particular um, model a bit unique is that it is a Western Digital. It's not a Hitachi or a Toshiba or um, a Corsair or uh, what was the Seagate. Um, all those. Um, while they have some some special things you might have to do with them, possibly updating the firmware, um, uh, you know, uh, or matching the numbers up, this particular board um, is a bit of a bear because in order to swap the board out, you got to pull the board off, and then right here, let's see if I can grab a pointer of some sort. Well, right here is U12. Um, that is the NV RAM that has to be removed from the donor board and removed from the app, the um, bad board and then the one from the bad board has to be cut, transferred over to the new donor board so that's what this is going to be doing today um, this will also be a first time for me I've never done one of these boards so it'll be interesting to see how this goes um, so with that I'm going to put this board off to the side and I'm going to prep the donor board Real quick. Uh, alrighty. So I'm gonna get some Capton tape and I'm gonna tape it down a bit. Turn the music back up. Yeah, I like classical music, so um, when I'm alone working on problems. Like of this magnitude, I definitely want to be listening to some Schubert or some Mozart, um, even Beethoven. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Beethoven. 
Um, I love his stuff, but just, anyways, not the big deal. So I'm going to put some Kapton tape on here and cover up some of these components so that they, we don't loosen them up to the point where they also get desoldered because that would be bad. Although I do have a, another board here. <laughs> and if you see something shiny, it's just my bald head. shield here I can use the shield that and also tape that down and for anybody else who doesn't know these this what I call a heat shield is just from a, um, it, it's the um, EMF shield out of a I think this comes out of an iPad air um, yeah you, know, you get a bone yard full of these iPads and stuff and they have little handy dandy little components like this that you know can be repurposed and so that's what we do um, right, so take that bad boy down here I'll put some more captain tape on here because I really want it very secured excuse me, my metal fingers, so I can just put some pressure on it, and I also have my um, fine tweezers, which, you know, that's really the bomb diggity there. Let's get started in removing. Smoke is my cardboard underneath getting that hot. I forgot to grab my holder. I'm going out the door, so I'm doing this without a holder. some floats.
back over here on the side again. Add some flux to it. This one will be a little bit more to go with. That dot aligns up with the divot, so that's the, how you know uh, which way it goes on. Um, because those pins that actually hit the PC board, those pins, they have a specific um, configuration that they have to go into. Uh, so, yeah, that's a pretty important detail. If someone's watching this and thinking they're going to try that, um, you definitely, uh, definitely going to need to know that little bit of information there. Bump the temperature up to 380. This one I've got to be really careful with because I don't want any bent prongs and bent pins. I just need this come off just as sweet as that other one there. There we go. Start to loosen that now. And there we go. Set her off to the side. Beautiful. This one can be trashed. It's our bad board. See? Marked it with the B. And then this is our new donor board. Mm -hmm. Now this one I'm going to take a little bit of the um, Clean up the underside of it. And 
and sadly my, my ham scoop is also back at the home for me. Otherwise, uh, International World Headquarters. <laughs> I'm going to cool down a little bit and inspect it a little bit. Handy dandy little feature on the iPhone is the magnifier, which is good enough for this. But I just want to make sure that. Best as I can tell. Let's snap a picture of it real quick. Got contact, but it's not the best contact. So I'm gonna fire it back up again. See if I can get it to slide back into place. looking a heck of a lot better. Alright, let's cool it down. And we'll let it sit for a few minutes. And then we'll go ahead and place it back into the hard drive. And the MV RAM has been put over. should be able to do is fire up that drive and start copying off data. Um, it's still got cool enough. And while it's chilling out, I'm going to clean it up a bit because I also do not want just to get conductive with the, excuse me, the excessive flex that's on there. Let's clean all this up. And I hope my voice is coming through loud and clear on this recording. A little bit more. Moisture up. So I got moisture there. Moisture is not our friend. Our friend. interlude. Bring this hard drive back into play. And hopefully the luck is on our side. And it's maybe a little skill too. The NV RAM came out 
came over, everything seated nice. We'll put it in the dock and we'll actually get power. And then we'll be able to grab all the data that we have in here. And somebody will be a very, very happy camper. Considering that when they brought it in to me, they said this was the only place that had all these photos that are on here. Alrighty. Moment of truth. <laughs> and that is how we do it my good friends we've got power back and now we just got to figure out the configuration all right talk to you soon thank you for tuning in